Well, good morning, everyone. So Anna's not with us today. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Anna's not with us today. She's at a family wedding. So I'm joined with a very special guest, Andrew Warwick. Hello. Hello, Hello. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you it's know a pleasure some people to be here. <laughs> you know some people up there too, don't you? Oh wow! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah, so um, you came a couple of days ago to for three weeks. You're staying in the community. Yes. And um, felt drawn to be together and to link with me. Yeah, sure. And. Um, we met like almost a year ago now, last February, wasn't it? That's correct, yeah. And um, we did a couple of projects together and it was like really a healing time. And then you were sharing with me that I never really left your mind. And now um, here you are back and it just felt like something really, really healing happens between us. And it was so interesting that Anna wasn't um, here due to the wedding. And so I felt like, oh, I think Andrew's supposed to come on the show. So here we are. Um, so I just wanted to like ask you, like, um, what was that call in your heart to really come this time? I know like it's been a really deep process since like last year, something's really shifted for you. Yeah, yeah, you know, things have been shifting in my life for, for several years now. And I just, uh, I just felt the you know the extreme prompt about a year ago or more to continue on some some rehab that uh, was really needed, and I, I came down here for I called it mind mind rehab, and mm. back home for people. And when I got here, it just the way that I think, the way that I can express myself, you know, the concepts of no private thoughts and no people pleasing was just. Mm. It's not overwhelming for me at all. It's just, I just feel at home. Mm -hmm. And so when I got here, I just knew that I was at the right place. Mm. And I knew that it stuck finally after all these years when I went home. Mm. The, the praying every day and the meditation, my, my meditation mm. stuck. Mm. I didn't miss a day while I was gone. Yeah. And so I knew I was coming back. I didn't know where, I didn't know when, but I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'd be coming back. Oh, I knew you'd be back. Yeah. <laughs> And when I was here, we had these, we had this link, these projects that we were doing together. Mm. And with these projects, and of course, this open-mindedness, being able to share your mind, mm. um, I knew that these epiphanies that were coming in, well, when I was away, they kept happening. Mm. And every time these epiphanies would come in, the, you would come to my mind. Mm. And so I was just overwhelmed with, with, with you and mm. with here. And then when it all came back together, when I came back, I walked mm. through the door of La Casa and I actually felt like I was at home. When I, when I landed in Vallarta, mm. I remember walking to my hotel room and mm. when I took every step, mm. the vibration and the energy of the body from being at home from work mm. and all that just actually just lowered, lowered with every step. And I just walked into what felt like a mm. home or a peace where I knew I, you know, I had just the split mind separated mm. and I was just here only mm. work and all that's gone. So I was like, okay, this is amazing because I don't get that back home. You know, yeah. I, I just this feeling of so much gratefulness yes. and then walking the bus journey down here and walking through and seeing you just, yeah. it just all came together. Yeah. Yeah. It's really wonderful. Yeah. So our kind of history is kind of similar. Our pasts have been quite, quite similar. And it's like, there's been this sort of like connection of some sort of like deeper healing um, that's happened. We could say we've lived a bit of a colourful life. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> bit rebellious in our time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Against the rules <laughs> of life. Yeah. And yeah, we were just like sharing like that often on the spiritual journey, like I'd found that like not many people have been kind of like violent and we've been violent in our life. Street fighting was kind of became quite normal to us and it's like a becomes like an everyday occurrence. It just becomes like normal. And then you kind of go on this journey and then you seemingly meet these people who haven't done these types of things. And for me, it was just like, I felt like I had to like keep it like down. Yeah. And I'm trying to like, I'm trying to change who I am, but deep down I have all these shameful feelings, guilt, embarrassment, and nowhere to be able to express it. So I was like so grateful that I could come to live in miracles and have that. <sighs> <sighs> that 
that space to be able to share that. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's incredible. You know, what comes to my mind right now when you're saying all this is when I was, when I was very young, it, it's amazing how I think now compared to them. And when I compare, I just remember for whatever reason I was getting into the little scuffles, whatever, but that's grade three. <laughs> you know, I used to ask my dad, how do I, how do I, my father, how do I deal with this? And his, his response was hit, hit him 10 times as fast, <laughs> 10 times as hard, in 10 times the worst place possible. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And just when, when I grow up with that, mm -hmm. my mentor, I grew up with that, I just didn't know any different. Mm -hmm. But I knew all along that underneath all of it, there was something that was missing. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just didn't outsource that. that uh, I, didn't, I didn't go down the pathway of finding out what that was. Mm -hmm. I just... I just woke up every day remembering that I needed to put on armor mm. and I just went out into the world always expecting an attack. Mm. So I was always ready for it. I didn't know any other way of living. And it's just amazing thinking that the world is always attack defense. Yeah. Only to find out now that that's not a part of my life at all. Yeah. It's amazing that yeah. the, the, the disparity, the difference, just shocking actually. Yeah, thank God for the course to actually be able to take it back to our minds rather than, okay, the world is against me. Yeah. I've got to protect myself. Right. And these seeming situations, which is not my fault. Right, you're <laughs> not my fault at all. <laughs> totally. And you're, and you're preparing for all of this attack, which you yeah. actually put Believe out there. Happening. To to Yeah, it's just constantly yeah. this loop yeah. that my mind was in. I had no idea. Yeah. And once I broke the loop, I just made all this room for all this, this love, all this yeah. peace, and yeah. it's, it's overwhelming. Yeah, and it was so interesting, like we were talking about the other day, like, what, what was that really all about? And um, through this exploration, I found, like, I was so wanting, like, contact and to be really met. And somehow, in this grievance, there was, like, it was like a no-holds-barred, um, in the complete and utter moment, in the now, with somebody, testing your skills and it's just like it's just this deep like call for love that in the world just seems completely and utterly crazy but like you're just wanting something much much deeper yeah. and it seems to give you something like you just feel alive or, or, or something but yet deep down underneath it all there was like this call for love but somehow as you said through the upbringing through seeming these these ideas that were in the mind like love that was the last thing you could that was seen, on my mind right but yet it was like this deep deep call for love and in so much fear and as you, and as you, and as you said like okay I'm going out to defend myself which means that I believe in attack right and so when I'm always thinking about that I'm going to need to defend myself the reflection is going to come back to be attacked and yet sometimes it seems like well I wasn't doing I wasn't doing anything wrong yeah and this scenario plays out but thank God for the course that could see like, oh my God, I, I created all of that in my mind to simply heal it and bring it back to here rather than believing that I'm a complete and utter victim of the world that I see. Yeah, and you know, and I guess at one point through all of this tumultuous and adversity or through all of it, there's just eventually you either, you either succumb to it or break in it or you end up in jail or something. Or, or you switch and you realize that there's got to be a different way. Mm. And I know for me, mm. when I was about 20, after most of my fighting and most of my, most of my violent sort of life had ended, uh, I, I remember being in bed and I just woke up from a fresh sleep and I was very angry. Mm. And I, I remember asking myself, why are you angry? And the, and the answer blew my mind. Mm. The answer came back saying, mm. well, because you're angry. And I just remember shooting up out of bed, like just looking. What? Like as if I was talking to myself. Mm. I, you know, I had, I had nice sports cars, a beautiful home all to myself, and I had everything a guy would need. And I remember sitting there going, except I don't have an answer to this. The answer mm. is because I'm angry mm. and it didn't sit well. Mm. So I remember sitting there for a couple of hours until mm. the answer that came through mm. was deeper than you're angry because you're angry. Mm. And from there, I spent the next two years going deeper and deeper, mm. asking why, why to everything. Mm. I had to know, I had to know, why are you sad? Mm. Okay, well, I had to come to some sort of resolution mm. other than because you're sad. Or, mm. And from there, the journey just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm. You know, and 
I don't know why I asked myself that question. All I know mm -hmm. is that I screwed up in the answer. And in screwing up, it made me yeah. realize the insanity of it. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. That was that pinnacle point. Exactly. What was it for you? Um, I think the turning point for me was um, I felt like I was at crossroads. And um, it was almost like I was on this dark edge. There was this complete and utter dark edge. I felt taken far too many drugs. So I had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to look at, I had to look at the situation. So the situation was okay: drug overdose, right? Kill someone, be killed, right. or end up in prison for the rest of my life. So that was the four. Probably that was the best, the best I was going to hope yeah. for in going in this direction. And I was stood there, and I thought. Thank God my mind clicked in and I thought, do you know what, that's actually the easiest thing. That's the easiest route that I can go. But what about if I actually turn around and try and deal with this? And so I thought, you know what, I love a challenge. The hardest thing is going to be facing all this. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to face everything that I've done. So I just turned around and got a therapist and started working through everything that I'd been through and that I'd done. So that was the that was the turning point for me. Um, so yeah, I felt very grateful for that. But yeah, I didn't I didn't come to the point I didn't know why I didn't know why I was doing it either. That's the kind of interesting thing. When you get angry, it becomes normal. It just became normal to be angry. Yeah. And then I don't know why I'm angry. Right. And then, and as you said that that thought because you're angry and it's like that's not even a, that's it just not, doesn't satisfy yeah you. it's not even well, I mean, an answer yeah. and that that is the thing that's consistently fueling but yet you came to the point where you questioned that like no that can't be that can't be who i am an answerless guy yeah 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 it's like we're being fooled by the ego that we are this terrible person you've done these terrible things you're never gonna change you're angry you've done this you've done that but yeah. thank God something, it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of interesting because I, I, I would say to like my friends and that, I actually understand why they don't turn around and want to look at the thoughts because it feels really, really painful. And there's so much suppressed guilt. You know, like what we talked about, like you, you get into trouble, you have a fight and then afterwards you actually do feel really guilty. And then it's like your friends come in, your, uh, your, your like thoughts come in and say, no, he deserved it. Right. And so it picks you back up again to say, okay, you, you're justifying in your mind, but all the time you're just suppressing how you're really, really feeling about yourself. That's interesting. I'm looking at the suppression now mm. because at the time I actually, I remember not feeling guilty at all because I, I thought it was a way of life. Mm. Like when I was geared up for war, like geared up for a day to day battle it was just like this is how you know and I thought normal was this is the way everybody lived only to find out later on that that I was the one that thought like this really only mm -hmm. and that the rest of the people around me didn't look at life as a battlefield yeah. so that was neat because then I was able to warm up to uh, more love or a more friendly way of living a lot quicker yeah because I was the abnormal one in a way mm -hmm. but at the time it didn't feel like that yeah. and not having the opportunity to express any of that growing mm -hmm. up or missing the opportunity, missing the prompts. Yeah. I didn't, and I just felt it was one way, but then making the shift now, mm. I am so happy. It's, it's such an afterthought. It's such a, mm. it, you know, it's not a part of who or what I am now at all. Mm. I don't think about those things at all. Mm. Just distant memories, which is helpful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting what you said, because in, in, in that environment, really what you want to do, you, need to, you want to express how you're truly feeling, but everything's being suppressed but you can't express to anyone because no one in that circle is going to understand you. And it's like so important that really we have this opportunity to express. So I can see like when you said like, you're so grateful for, for when you come, yeah. that you have somewhere that you can actually continuously just express what's going on because something's been so suppressed that needs to like come up. So I feel very grateful for that. And then we kind of have each other to like, wow, to kind of explore it so I can let go of it in my mind. 
Yeah, I like having you as being, you know, someone uh, to very relatable. Mm. It allows just some of the fleeting and, mm. and obscure thoughts that come up to let them go because you can relate to me a little bit. Yeah. And the way you phrase some things when you say them to me, it allows me to really realize, yeah, you've gone through a little bit of what I've gone through and that mm. you're with me on this, this trust that we can let it go together. Yeah. I like that a lot, actually, because yeah. I felt so alone for so long. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it feels very, very lonely. Yeah, doing this together, and I'm really realizing how helpful that is. Mm. Yeah, it really sucked doing it all on your own before. <laughs> yeah. Thinking that you were all alone. Mm. Thinking that you were the only one that could help yourself. Yeah, this has been Yeah. really helpful. Yeah, I think like this time as well, when you've like come here, I don't know, something in like my guilt has sort of like swayed because like there was sort of like an innocence about how you talked about the past and I'd still like had this hardness a little bit around it of like, yeah, I've been a terrible person. And like there was this sort of like lightheartedness about how, how, how you were sharing. I know you were, you were being completely honest and somehow it was like, yeah, it was giving me permission to say like, no, I don't need to hold on to that, to the past of who I thought I was or still who I think I am. I can let go and begin to let this innocence come through. And I guess that was something that was very um, unfamiliar to us, innocence, love, joy. Yeah, um, yeah just having that true meeting with, an, with another, which is really what we absolutely craved. Even at that time, it was just a complete and utter call for love. And, the, and one of the interesting things I, I want to talk about, how, how, did we get, how did we get on this spiritual journey? Yeah, no kidding. You know, that's so interesting because when I look back, I was four foot 11, <laughs> 72 pounds, and I had a heck of a mouth on me. But it was really like, you know, I only just thought, okay, that's, that's what the way it's going to be for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. only to realize that, that, there, that really underneath it all, when I think back, I know it was a, a bit of an attack defense or whatever, but really I feel now like I did have a lot of love to mm -hmm. offer. I just had no way mm -hmm. of showing it, no way, no ground to yeah. walk it and and now it's so open i get to just i get to do whatever whenever and everybody welcomes it mm. so now it's so flipped mm. it's a double blessing yeah. because a i've gone through so much in my mind hard stuff i'm not going there anymore mm. i don't need to so when it comes up i have a place to let it go but mm. b all i have room for all i want is is a much more loving mm. environment and that's what i'm getting mm. And that's what, that's what we can all have. It's just kind yeah. of overwhelming, actually, some days. And, and a lot of days, unbelievable. Mm. But what I, what I, when, I, when I left back in March, I, I, was, you know, I did my own form of meditation every day. And that's mm. what I knew that what I, my new path was going to stick. But also, I was always waiting for that ego backlash or that ego flip where well, what you've got is going to end. Mm. I was always waiting for it, but it never came. Mm. And now it's been almost a year and it never came. Mm. This... this New course of action has been mm. the way to go. And so you ask, you know, how did we come to this? Well, it, all it took was one <laughs> thought of one thought of, of the change and then seeing love in its pure form, even just the slightest and knowing that's what I want. Mm. How do I get more of it? I don't mm. care how you find it or how, how it looks, mm. but how do I move in that direction in any way at any time now mm. versus the other direction? Mm. I've had enough of that, right? So I've had yeah. enough of that other direction. Yeah. And so... There's no guilt in leaving it. Mm. I'm done with it. <laughs> I'm done with it. It's, yeah, yeah that's, this, is, this is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, in a way, like when you remind me, I, ca I can't really describe it, but like even through all of that, there was always something that was loving there that I couldn't get in touch with. Like there must be more than this. There's more to me than this hatred, really. It's self-hatred. There's, there's more going on. But it's like I didn't know how to cultivate that with inside of myself. Yeah. And it was like flaming, um, fire in the flames of anger and, and whatever was pretty easy. But underneath it was like something calling, like, no, this is, this is not really, really what you're actually asking for. Right. And I guess that's what, what, what has really helped in seeing it is that there was just really this contact, this, this, this love. It's like a dance, like two people dancing. It was actually this, yeah, again, this deep call for love. But there needed to be able to put that in another way because it's interesting because we both have a lot of energy yeah and I feel like my energy's gone down so much from that but I used to be really really like so energetic and then meditation was the thing that really really helped me 
I never, I never thought that. I didn't understand when people said calm. I just felt on Agitated edge, all the completely time. all yeah. the time. Even in bed, yeah. I'd go to sleep yeah, and I'd be mm, on edge. And so I never knew it was actually possible to be peaceful. And I think that was another turning point actually for me was I had so many thoughts going on all, all the time. And when I found out about meditation, I thought my only prayer was, God, I just want peace. Yeah. I, just want to, I just want some peace from, from this. And slowly through the practice, then something like softened inside and that this like murmur just like stopped. And that was just, wow, I just felt so grateful for that. That felt like massive to me. Yeah, that would have been a huge shift. Yeah. And that was all, that's almost like what, what happened to you from the, from the last time. You've noticed that your energy's really started to, to calm. And that's been a, a real comfort to you since um, February. That's funny that you say that because mm. I don't know that it, where I'm staying right now at the Casa with you, everyone got a bit of a briefing that, yeah, Andrew's a little bit spunky, he's a little bit wiry, whatever. And, and you know, Melissa was telling me, I don't see that at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's really calm, he's really down there. I'm like, Who, who's she talking about? Mm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all I've ever been told is, you know, high yeah. energy. You know, it's, that's, that's funny. Yeah, because I really felt, I, like from meeting you a year ago, when you very first came, you had so much energy just came from whatever you've been doing. And then this time, as soon as we sat together, you were just like really like present and calm. And I was like, wow. Yeah, the meditation part of it, like for me, dedicating that time, whether whatever the time was a day was huge mm -hmm. for me. But the biggest problem I had with the meditation was I went by other people's terms about what meditating Mm. was like I had a preconceived notion about that I needed to meditate a certain way in order to do some healing. So I had such a resistance against that, I actually wouldn't meditate at all. Mm. I didn't realize that that was the process mm. of what was going on for years ago, because mm. I kept hearing the word meditation. There was a lot of likeness to it, mm. but then these ideas, you know, the ego was saying, well, here's what meditation looks like, so I wouldn't do it. But now, I came up with my own terms of meditation, and kind of, kind of every day, meditation looks a different way each mm. day, but what I do know is that each time I meditate that's comfortable for me, it brings me such a level of peace mm. that I just keep going whatever, whatever way is easiest mm. in forms of my meditation. And I've found it working wonders every day. Mm. So it's like some days I might be playing some sort of music, but I find that level of peace. Mm. Another day I'll just get silence. Another day, you know, it might be some background noise like a dog barking, whatever. But there's, there's always a different way that I meditate. Mm in the moment mm -hmm. and I've just found that there's 10 different ways that, that work for me. Mm. And I've been able to find that using that approach, I can drop in, I don't know oh, terminology, mm. but like I drop into where mm. I'm at, or where it's needed mm. a little bit easier without that mm. edginess, you yeah. know, that you talk about, that, yeah. that, that, that vibration. Yeah. yeah, it kind of went with, it dropped away, it fizzled mm. away. I don't know where it went, mm. but I'm glad it's gone. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So what was it specifically that really drew you back this time? You're staying for like three weeks for this, for this moment. I'm a bit stubborn and, mm -hmm. and I knew, like I remember talking to my brother, Jason, I, I remember saying to him, he says, well, what are you planning to do this winter? And I said, well, I'm going to Mexico. And he's like, well, you, you, don't, you don't just do that. You kind of need to pray into that. You know, like we look at these things and we pray into them. I'm like, well, that's fine but I know I'm going. So like in my head, I was just like, I'm going there. So, so I mean, I don't, you know, and it's funny because it coincides a little bit about how things around here change all the time. It's like right in the moment when I know I'm going, I've got my time off, mm. I'm going to go. So I just knew I was going. I just didn't know how it would look. Mm. And that's really all I needed. Mm. You know, like I needed, and I felt spirit guiding me to wrap things up back home, like clear your mind, Mm. you know, clear your mind back home so that when you're there, you can be there. Mm. And I could, I, I'm starting to see the difference of that every day. Like when you're focused on something, really give it your more attention mm. and you'll get more out of it. You'll get more out of it. And that, that for business mind, that's like, yes, then I'll get more quote unquote, you know, monetary assets, mm. business guys, development of growth and mm. stuff like that. But when it comes to peace, same thing, <laughs> switch it over to focusing more on the peace and you get more of it. So <laughs> that was, that was kind of my approach. <laughs> <laughs> And it's working out, so I'm, I haven't solidified any sort of process yet, but you asked, so there's your answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just feel very grateful that you've come and that we get this opportunity just to really like share this again. It's like, I was just sharing with Laverne, like in you come in, it feels like there's something working in the background of like me, like something softening, but I'm, I'm not really too sure of it. I'm not so gripped on, 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 on thoughts of anything. I don't feel like there's anything pressing um, to explore, but just something in just being together feels like something's just being 
released in that. So I just feel so grateful that we've had this opportunity to come back together for this for this time and whatever um, that's going to bring. Yeah, I, I feel that too. Mm. I don't know what that is or what that means, but mm. I really feel the like when we're together, like the 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 steady, the calmness. Mm. And and I only mean that because I've sensed or felt what I would thought was your uneasiness or whatever, mm. but I've, I've seen even in you, maybe that was me that dropped, I don't know, but I've, I feel like the overall energy between us has really, set, has really settled, so. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great thing. It yeah, is. that's it. It is, because what I find with the, the calmness, I can mm. see things a little bit more clearly. Yeah. You know, it doesn't feel as, as, as sporadic or loopy in my head. Yeah, it's great that we can take it back to our minds and see, oh, this is, this is, this is me softening. This is me, yeah. like, relaxing. <laughs> this isn't Ken. This is me. I'm like, but I didn't think I was hard to begin with. Yeah. So I don't know. That's weird, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is just really, really joyful to be here. Mm. I'm learning a, a new way to express the word mm. joy because every day it feels like a new plateau mm. gets toppled or, yeah. or wrecked. There's a new mountain that I get to climb of joy. Mm. That's a hell of a goal to have. Well, you've been practicing a lot of gratitude, haven't you? Being, yeah. yeah. It's amazing how, mm. how when you first look, when I first looked at being gra grateful for something, I didn't, at first it was like, you know, I, I questioned, I actually questioned the authenticity of what mm. was grateful. Mm. But once I was like, hey, scrap that, that, that sounds weird. Mm -hmm. You know, like, go just be grateful for things that are just mm -hmm. abstract. And then I found that there was so many things to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. It was, then I had to actually calm that down. The list started getting too long. It was like, okay, well, let's, let's, I think, there's some, I, I think there's something <laughs> deeper here to look at. So, so I started to endeavor in that. But yeah, that was just a really good stepping stone to be grateful mm -hmm. for things. And I knew that because when I would outsource and I would ask my friends, hey, are you, what are you grateful for? Nobody could come up with any answers at all. So I was like, okay, well, that was definitely a good stepping stone. Mm. But now the, the word joy seems to have uh, mm. been something even greater than, than, than uh, grateful. Yeah. So it's, it was a good stone, a stepping stone, yeah. Yeah, completely. Okay, so we're all, oh, two minutes is coming on the screen. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really was. So I'm just so looking forward to seeing what really happens and just the healing that's going to take place. And yeah, we don't have to know. That's an absolute pleasure yeah. to know you, brother. Thank you so absolute much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me, everybody. Yes. I'm very grateful and I'm in a lot of joy. <laughs> yeah, so good to see you. <laughs> oh, that's right, I do know. Yeah. Hi! <laughs> There's Anna. Oh, yeah, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We love you all so much. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>